We'll be going over IRS Form 2624, Consent for Third Party Contact. So uh, the IRS may request that you complete this form if they need to reach out to a third party such as a financial institution or an employer regarding an information return that they might have filed with the IRS containing your tax information. This might come up during an IRS examination. Uh, this may um, also be an issue if you're trying to uh, receive an information return uh, from that uh, company or institution and you have not been able to do so on, uh, on your own behalf. So uh, if, you, if you are in a situation where you've received a notice, for example, let's imagine that uh, you did a rollover from your 401k to an IRA and you know that this was a tax-free uh, rollover. It was done in accordance with the Internal Revenue Code, but for some reason your information return was marked as a taxable transaction. Uh, you may experience some difficulty in trying to get any resolution, in which case uh, now you've got a tax bill that's issue, uh, but you know for a fact that you shouldn't owe that tax bill you would complete this form uh, that would allow the IRS to go to that financial institution and have them share records. So then they would sit down and if you were correct, they would determine that your rollover was not a taxable distribution that would allow them to close the examination. That's just one example of where you might use this form. Uh, so. Uh, the form's straightforward. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward and, and, and cut and dry. Uh, what this is not, it's not a power of attorney form uh, that would be on a separate document known as IRS Form 2848, uh, Declaration of Representative and Power of Attorney form. And it's not uh, a consent for the IRS to share information with a third party. That would be IRS Form 8821, Tax Information Authorization. This is a form that gives the IRS uh, consent, your consent, to go contact a third party on your behalf. So uh, the IRS doesn't always need your uh, permission. Uh, for example, if there's a criminal investigation, they don't need to ask your permission to go conduct a criminal investigation. Uh, but it, generally speaking, if this is about a tax issue uh, that it does not have a criminal element to it, then they would probably ask you to do this. Uh, you would most likely receive a notice, and that's, you know, you would, uh, there would be an IRS office as a point of contact for that notice. That's where you would uh, file your completed form. But let's take a look at this form real quick. It's a one-page, pretty straightforward form with three parts. So at the very top, you'll put your taxpayer information, your name or names as shown on your tax return. So if you're giving the IRS authorization to contact a bank about a jointly held account between a married couple, then both names need to go on the tax return. Uh, you would also uh, need to complete, uh, have both spouses sign the return. So in part one, uh, you're discussing the information return filed with the IRS and the blanks that you're filling in, you're basically authorizing, in this case, Acme Corporate Bank to disclose to the IRS uh, records pertaining to any information returns filed for a given tax year, in this case, 2022. So uh, this specific consent form is good for a period of three months unless you revoke that consent down in part three below. So you, you also uh, state that you may revoke this consent at any time and that you're mailing the consent both to the IRS and to the institution in question. So uh, a financial institution uh, cannot disclose your financial record 
records except as permitted or if required by law. They can't require this consent as a condition of doing business. And uh, you, you as a taxpayer may request a copy of a record of any disclosure. So these are all things that you are stating when you sign this form. Uh, and they cannot be contacted until you sign or for both spouses, both spouses must sign. So you would sign, date, enter a telephone number where each of you can be reached. Part two is certain sensitive information that you would provide that allows the IRS to uh, attach your consent with the records that they have. So specifically your taxpayer ID number or your social security number, uh, the name of the institution, the account number that you're discussing, uh, the street address, uh, city, state, and zip code for that third party. If this was an employer, uh, you may not have an account number, but you would still have the other information relevant. And then part three is uh, a statement that revokes the consent. So you would not complete both part one and part three. You would only complete one or the other, and therefore you would only sign one or the other, not both. So that's all there is for this uh, uh, tax form. It's pretty straightforward. We've written an article that goes into depth about IRS Form 2624. We'll put a link to it in the show notes. We'll also, uh, uh, you can also go to our website directly. Uh, simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS Form 2624, and you'll see our article. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And if you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe to our, uh, if you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, it will attach uh, links to articles and videos that we've created on forms mentioned in this video. But if there's any question that you have or a comment, or if, you, if there's a topic that you'd like us to discuss in an upcoming video, please post your question or comment in the show notes. Thank you very much and have a great day.